Uh, life kind of went on, and I rose higher and higher in the cadet org. Um, but now you still hadn't signed a Sea Org contract. Oh, no, I did, because I finally decided, okay, I'm staying here in Florida. I'm going to join the Sea Org. And I joined the Sea Org contract. I signed a Sea Org contract, and I joined the cadet org. Did you kind of give up? Yeah, yeah, I gave up. Did they, did they do some sort of a handling on you? Yeah. The, the, you know, showing me the bad pictures and the good pictures. Well, okay, in the canteen where we bought stuff, they had a pictures, pictures from the WOG world, or, you know, the world outside Scientology. WOGs are everybody who's not a Scientologist. Yeah. yeah, and then they had pictures from inside Scientology. Two different boards. Okay, one would show, like, Sea Org members in their uniforms, and everything's great, and, you know, those pictures they have in magazines, people are like, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it, things like that, and they're like, oh, so they're so happy. And then on the, other picture, on the other board, they would have, like, Marilyn Manson, they would have, like, fires, they would have, like, at one point, I think they even had, like, dead bodies in the morgue, just, like, so that we, 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 when we thought of the world outside Scientology, we thought of, like, horrible things, dead bodies, drugs, and when we thought of the Sea Org, we thought, oh, people are happy, spiritual freedom. It was like, yeah, it was just well, labels. Round about this time, when she was visiting me, and, and, and you know, she was asking me, I think, about psychiatry and how bad it was and how bad society was, no, because no. obviously she'd been exposed to these pictures. So I said, well, in actual fact, Zoe, you know, um, surprisingly, under, you know, recently, you know, the last few years, the economy has actually been very good. You know, and oh, America yeah. is more prosperous yeah, than it's that. ever been. People are doing better. There's more money. People are happier. And, um, you know, in actual fact, crime statistics are falling right now. You know, murder rate in L.A. is the lowest it's ever been, you know. And they say it's connected with the good economy. You know, I, I just kind of told her really what was going on. And then she um, went back and repeated this to her mother. Yeah. And apparently her mother like blew up, like, who's telling you the economy's good? Yeah. He told you that the economy's good? He told you that crime's dropping? What? Th this is what you're telling me this is outrageous. Yeah, when I went to my mom and she, oh, oh, it was, like, he, he told I mean, me this all on the same visit, like the same, like, month, two, long, two month long visit. So then when I went back and I wanted to go, mom, my mom was saying, oh, you know, it's really bad out there, and how will you survive? It's like a jungle, and it's horrible. And then I said, you know, Mom, <laughs> the economy is doing good now and all this, and psychiatry <gasps> really isn't that bad and all this. And she, said, she turned white. She was like, and then she, was, she, then she did blow up, like Dad said, because I remember I kind of got scared. I was like, whoa. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's so outrageous to hear you saying this, uh, that... Oh, yeah. I mean, this indoctrination is so heavy-handed. It's There's no, nothing subtle about it. I mean, it's just outright indoctrination. Well, like that policy, um, the, the Earth is going to be no longer inhabitable by the year 2000. Then nothing mattered except making sure that we could survive on this planet, you know. Uh, what you're saying is true, but, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, I remember reading those policies and you know, s we never had these bulletin boards like you're, like you're describing yeah, or anything like that. Th this is children that they're indoctrinating yeah. this, this with such a heavy hand. Um, you know, I was an adult when I got in, so I was always a little bit skeptical about this, the world's about to end stuff. And, and I mean, I had already been in the real world for 23 years before I got into Scientology. So... I never really lost my connection with it to uh, the degree that you're describing as a child growing up in this. I, never I had just that connection. I just had no idea the degree of indoctrination that children are being subjected yeah. to. Yeah. I oh. had no idea. It's horrifying. Yeah. It was just like the way I was raised, you know. I mean, I didn't really I I guess I didn't really believe the world was going to end that soon, but I was. If anyone asked me, I'd be like, "Well, elevation." Oh no! Oh, I was told that it might be extended because Scientology had been here for a while now. And yet, these few things that your dad told you, yeah, kept you from being completely uh, indoctrinated into this. Well, I was point pretty much completely indoctrinated. I would say, I, yeah. So. Now you moved up into high posts in the cadet org. Yeah, and then they said, we're going to make this cadet TDC, so uh, a cadet 
technical training course, which and means we would train, like, yeah, we'd be training or studying Scientology. To become auditors. To become, no, not to become auditors in this case, it was to become um, supervisors and word clearers so the adults no longer had to supervise the kids. The children could supervise themselves in their school. Mm. And I studied among adults for, I did this for a year. This was at Flag? Mm hmm I did, I studied 11 hours a day for six days a week. Except for Saturday because I had that morning time, but the rest of that. And then um, the other day, Sunday, when I didn't study Scientology, I did 10 hours of school to keep in my school time. I went on something called the student hat. The student hat. How to study. It's a course on how to study. I, and you could only take the day off every two weeks that you're supposed to get per policy if you were on target on course. And I was never on target on course because I was always um, you know, late in the student hat. So finally, my days just got unbearable. It was so horrible. Because you weren't getting any time off at all. Y well, I could have stood that. You know, I'd stood that for a long time. But it was doing something that was just so boring. Because I, I would, like, read one page. Like, in a day, maybe I'd, get, I'd get through half a page because I'd read that page. And I would say, you know what? You're supposed to feel great about everything you study. You know, you're supposed to be all happy about it. And I wouldn't be, so then they would say, you must have a word in there that you don't understand, because that's Scientology study technology. Mm. And I would say, no, I don't. I've looked up every single word, that whole page. I would look up in a dictionary and practice saying in sentences. Like, looking up the word and, and all 30 definitions, or like that. I was And really the, bad. and a, and, and, and I of. Had, yeah, <laughs> and I had a label on me. I was called significant. Yeah. Um, that's a very bad thing to be called in Scientology. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Uh, it's what they call all the students that are really trying to understand what he's yeah, saying. Yeah, I was really <laughs> trying to understand because I was like, you know, I suddenly decided I'm going to be in the Sea Org now and I'm a cadet. Then I should, you know, really get meaning it. From, yeah. from this. So then people started mentioning the EPF for me, which was a training corpse um, to go into the Sea Org. So I said no at first because I remembered everything Dad had said and I was still kind of wary. And after a while when it just got so bad and I was crying every day on the student hat. Anything to get off course. Huh? Anything to get off course. And I thought, like, I considered all that really hard work you're known for doing on the EPF. I considered that, like, that. When I thought that, I seemed like so much fun. Compared to what you were doing. Compared to what I was doing. So... I went on the EPF, and little did I know, they would just have me um, work clear the student hat, over, like clear up any words I didn't know on the student hat, over and over and over again in my study time. So I was just doing this illegal work, because I worked all day, all day from early in the morning till like 11 at night, except for five hours of study I did. And the this five hours of study was just going over the student hat. And you were 12? No, I think I was, because I was a year on the, on the cadet TTC, so I was around like 13, 14. I don't remember exactly. So when you say you were doing illegal work, what do you mean? I, I mean, not illegal work, but illegal work hours. But mm -hmm. I was staying up late at night and sleeping during the day to do like carpeting jobs. I was handling machinery that I shouldn't have been handling. Isn't that uh, against regulations? Uh, I mean, no. actual... Uh, I don't know of it being. I mean, it's normal. But I mean, I think you were too young by the law to be. Yeah, there. yeah, I was. Weren't you? Uh, didn't you tell me that you were operating one of those hammers a for jack, smashing a jackhammer? I hammer. did that later in the QI. Okay. You, a big jackhammer, but. Uh, what kind of machinery were you dealing with? Like, uh, we would transport stuff, or we would um, have to use this thing that would um, carry gravel up to the top of the FH roof, of the Sandcastle rooftop, like a, a conveyor belt sort of weird thing that would go up kind of slanted so it could get height. Um, we would be You were operating that? Yeah, like, not I didn't, but I ran people that did. And we would be using like carpet knives and uh, like sharp knives that we should have been using. It, I think it was more in the cadet org that I used, like the circular saws. I did use a drill gun. Um, and some saws on the EPF, but not as much as in the cadet org, later in the cadet org. Because I was on the Renault scene later in the cadet org. 